Welcome back to 33 Dreams of Indie. I'm your host, Robert Earl, and today I'm joined by Tammy Kaler. Tammy, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How, are you? how about you? I'm doing fantastic. Tammy is a mystery novelist. Um, her books have followed the adventures and career of a fictional Kate Riley as she pursues her dreams of indie um, in her racing career. And I got my hands on her fifth entry, Kiss the Bricks, and uh, matter of fact, spilled coffee on it and had to actually <laughs> get it on Kindle as well because I could not put it down. Uh, but this is the fifth in a series, uh, Dead Men Switch, uh, where Kate uh, follows her American Le Mans series as she starts out uh, Breaking Points, which is set at uh, Road America and Petit Le Mans, uh, Avoidable Contact. You jump into the 24 hours at Daytona. I'll be there here in a, uh, just a couple oh, weeks. And then awesome. uh, Red Flags, where um, she participates at the Long Beach Grand Prix, but then also starts to test indie cars. And then is a, uh, to set the stage, she's a full-time participant on the IndyCar series and uh, successful in uh, the Indy 500 when we enter into the story, correct? Yeah, it's correct. Fantastic. Well, welcome to the show. Thank uh, you. How did you get into writing? Uh, well, I've, I've, I've sort of always been a writer in my career. Um, I started out, well, I, I started in college admissions, actually, strangely enough. But uh, I, I, ended, I gravitated to any of the writing or the publication tasks in that job. And then I had the good fortune to be hired as a technical writer by a manager who was looking for someone who wasn't actually technical but could translate. Uh, and that that sort of launched me into a tech writing career. Um, I was I was uh, very active writing websites and things for the Web 1.0 version when you know all of a sudden everyone needed a website and no yeah. one had anything. Um, and I specialized in small technical companies. So I've continued that. I, I still do a lot of web content these days. You know, everyone needs web content. Right. Gotta have content. Gotta have content. So I do a lot of that kind of writing. Um, but fiction didn't come along. Fiction, I never, I was not one of those kids, you know, scribbling stories or, you know, okay. writing all the time. I never wrote fiction. I'd have told you I couldn't write fiction. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Strange. I, I just, I didn't, I didn't feel like I had that in me. Um, but that came along in, in 2003. So it's, it's been some years now. I, I woke up one morning with an idea, just this scene in my head that wouldn't go away. Um, and I kept kind of going, well, that's weird. That doesn't happen to me. You know, this is the fiction. So uh, I, I, I'm, I think I'm, I'm running into some of, probably some of your other questions, but I'm just going to no keep problem. talking. Yeah. Um, I found a class actually near me at a very good independent bookstore that was called, Do You Have a Book in You? Because I mm. figured that, that was the question, right? Right, right. <laughs> um, and so I just, I started writing and I kept writing. This was not mystery. This was not racing, none of that. But I... I kept going and explored this new world to me of writing fiction and finished a manuscript. It's terrible. It's <laughs> terrible. No one, no one, no one will see it ever. It's fine. But that, that taught me about sort of how to do it and, you know, the diligence required and, and that kind of thing. You, you remind me of Sa Simon Pagano talking about the first time ever time he drove a go-kart and his, he, he hit everything but the pace car is, I think oh, that's, that's awesome. That's a <laughs> great story. how he puts it. And, and, uh, the, the first time that he went out there. So where did racing come into the picture? Well, in 2004, I was working freelance. Um, you know, those were the heady days of the boom, right? And mm -hmm. I was working for, of all things, a subprime mortgage company. And they were making, that, you remember those days too, they were making money hand over fist, mm -hmm. right? And they were, they were also spending it like it was water. And um, one of their, a couple of their executives actually liked to go racing on their weekends. Okay. And so they got hooked up with some people and they, of all things, ended up sponsoring a car and the, the American Le Mans series itself. Wow. Okay. So I was working contract for the marketing department and all of a sudden they needed someone else to go do the marketing, which was actually hospitality and, and hosting mortgage brokers around the country at all of these American Le Mans series races. I knew zip about racing, nothing. But I was, I like learning, I like learning new things. I especially like learning things sort of from the inside out. And so, you know, I was like, okay, I'll go, I'll go pay me more money. I'll go, whatever. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and I, I walked into this world and just was agog, like, what is going on here? You know, all, all the, the scope of it, the scale, the money, the violence, the camaraderie, the competition, the, um, the business around it that I had just had never realized existed. Uh, and I, it was just, it fascinated me. So that's, that's sort of where racing showed up. Um, a lot of the tracks right now are offering uh, paddock pass uh, yeah. packages, and I would really encourage that. IMSA is very yes. open, uh, but the IndyCar opportunity uh, here yeah. in St. Pete, that Friday, Saturday is almost as exciting or is almost as uh, uh, more of the story when you see yeah. the cars put together and you're there up close and personal to them or you see them tuning them, uh, those types of things, and that the, the drivers are a bit on the pedestal, but you see them being regular people on those two days versus them having their game face on at, say, yeah. qualifying a race day that goes into it. Yeah, to me, it's not going to a race unless you can walk around the paddock and, you know, peek into the garages, watch whatever's going on, see the drivers, you know, in, in street clothes, just chatting to their engineers or doing whatever. And I do a lot of lurking in the paddock, just walking around and watching people, whether, you know, the teams, but also the fans. And it's, you know, it's, a, it's fascinating. It's really, a, it does give you a good inside look. I, I think so. And there's stories to be told from that. And that's part of what we're focused on with the, those that are looking at the, the road to Indy. You, you've said that you're an avid reader. Uh, you look like a, a, a Thomas Jefferson fan there behind you with, the, <laughs> yeah. with your library. <laughs> yeah, um, my, dream, it, my dream bookcase behind me. <laughs> what's, what's the last thing you read or what's currently on the list? Um, I, I actually just finished a really great uh, mystery. It's a standalone, not part of a series. It's called Unspeakable Things called by Jess Lowry. Um, and it was just amazing. Interesting story sort of told from the perspective of a teenager, but not, not a YA book of, of any kind, um, but really, really interesting. Uh, so I highly recommend that. Um, I, I read mostly mysteries. I mean, a lot of people who write in a genre say, I can't read, you know, in my genre, at least while mm. I'm writing and all that. I have to. I just, I, yeah. I read mostly that. It's what I like. It's what I write. Um, well, what, it wasn't what you originally came from. So it's always uh, right. fascinating to, to see the craft that goes into there. So you've written the mystery book. You've, you have this character, Kate Riley. Yep. Uh, she has her own Twitter handle uh, yeah. to be able to go there. So what's been the reaction to the books and, and to Kate? Um, people people who, who get to her seem to really like her. I mean, I think the racing world, um, people who've read the books, um, appreciate the detail and you know the 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 truthfulness of it the the um, how much I've tried to make things an accurate portrayal um, people who are not in the racing world like her when they get to her but sometimes I'll be honest the the topic is not the most appealing to people who don't know anything about racing already you know they sort of oh racing why would I care but if I can get them to read it um, they really enjoy it and I've, I've had friends <laughs> had friends almost get speeding tickets because they were you know trying to apex the turn coming off the freeway exit or you know whatever it is um <laughs> i was like i'm not liable for that you're on, that's yeah, on you yeah you're on, you're on um, your own there <laughs> um but so it you know it's it's been interesting it's been a little bit of a challenge because you know i'm looking for the race fans who read or the readers who are willing to look at racing um so i've you know i've embraced that and and there was a i think i was reviewed god it was motor trend Someone did a short review of one of my books and was like, this is, this is a book and a series that will explain to your significant other why you like racing, um, which, you know, is sort of really what I, what I tried to do is shine a light and explain to people why I find this world so fascinating. I mean, I'll, I'll touch upon that in a bit because I was intrigued by that being oh, cool. around racing uh, uh, for a long time. And, mm -hmm. and, and I see a couple paths that uh, Kate and her boyfriend could go down in, in other areas that, that they yeah. could go through. But we'll talk about that at a different time. Okay. What, was the, what was the first time that you attended uh, the Indy 500? Because there's something special about Indy. Oh, man, there is. Um, well, I went for the first time in 2014, and there was a reason. Um, I... I had been through the years slowly meeting more and more people in the racing world. And in um, April of 2014 at the Long Beach Grand Prix, actually, I finally had the chance to sit down and really meet face to face and talk with Pippa Mann, 
who, uh, you know, has driven in the Indy 500 seven times, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the first year. She actually, we talked, we chatted. I was, you know, telling her about my books. I had sent her one. And the thing is, Pippa's sort of my unicorn because she's a woman, she's a pro race car driver, and she reads. She's a reader. So um, I had sent her some books. She liked them. We talked. And I was talking about, you know, one of these days I need to get to uh, the Indy 500. I want to write about that and so forth. And she was like, well, you know, this year, and she said, and I haven't announced it yet, but here's what the car is going to look like. And she showed me a rendering of the car. And it was the first year that she drove the Susan G. Komen car. Yeah. And I, that, I just, I felt chills. I still kind of get a little chills now. And I was like, I got to go see this. I got to go see this. So I went for the first time that year, um, had no real inside access, just went and, you know, watched, was there for Friday for carb day. And it was funny because I'd never really been a fan of ovals. I'm still not a huge fan of NASCAR ovals, if I'm being honest. Um, really like road courses, street courses, you know, coming out of the sports car racing, that's sort of what you're about. Mm -hmm. But I sat mm -hmm. up there in the stands on carb day and they pulled out and I went, oh, I get it. I got it. In fact, I think I texted a friend, like, I got it, Simon, I got it. <laughs> I understand yeah. it now. Um, so I went then, but I wasn't ready to write that book yet. I, had, I still had to write Red Flags, sort of the transition. And I, because I really wanted to write about Long Beach. I lived there for 12 years. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted, to, I wanted to actively transition her to a different car. So uh, I went back in 2016 was the year I went to do research. 2017, I went to actually promote, and then 2018, I went because I still wanted to go again. <laughs> and I was fortunate enough, and again, it's, you know, you, you just, you take every opportunity to meet people, and you take every opportunity that's presented to you. I was actually fortunate enough to pick up um, a little a, a, a job working for ESPN in the pits for those three years. So, you know, normally their races are 22 cars. And they have their pit reporters and their, um, their producer types that go along mm -hmm. and, you know, coordinate. Well, with the expansion to 33 cars, they have an extra person in the last, last 10 pits of the, of the pits, mm -hmm. last 10 stalls of the pits. Um, no on-camera talent, just a, just a, you know, production person running around gathering information. What happened, being a runner. Exactly. Yeah. You know, they, they would call and say, something's going on on the 15 car, go check it out. Um, and so I got to be that person for three years. And that was, that was just amazing. To, to interject, that's how right. David Letterman got his start at the Indy 500, is mm -hmm. he actually okay. had attended there, but he was on the rail as a local TV um, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. announcer and did an interview uh -huh. during the race uh, right then. And, and that was our first little nice. we know that David Letterman would become uh, uh, so integral yeah, in racing. A but that's a, that's yeah. a side part on there is how people uh, get attracted to the race. Uh, yeah. so, so you keep coming back to, yeah. to, to the races there and uh, especially after this. Okay. So kiss the bricks. Um, you know, Kate had this dream of being a racer and mm -hmm. as you're talking about, there's something special about Indianapolis. Is, is Kate really your alter ego or is it a way for you to communicate your observations of racing or is it a blend of both? Well, let, let's, let me start by saying I'm a chicken behind the wheel, okay? <laughs> I'll just be honest. <laughs> I, I got through racing school, but I was by no means, you know, pushing the envelope or, or, or the fastest or anything, especially funny side note, when I went to racing school, there were three young men who had just gone through Jack Roush's Driver X okay, okay. show. David yeah. Reagan was one of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, the Gong uh, Show. Yeah. 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 So they had just they had just been the three finalists, and they were in my road course racing school. So yeah, I would, in a way it was good because it took the pressure off. I was not gonna ha even you know be anywhere near. I could I could do my slow thing. Anyway, I'm a chicken behind the wheel. So and Kate is obviously not. So, you know, that is not me in that respect, but certainly a lot of her voice is mine. Most of her voice is mine. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm writing, it's in first person. Um, she's uh, how many years? Probably 20 years younger than I am. So, you know, there's that difference as well. But um, yeah, absolutely. She's, as a character, she's a way for me to get my opinions out there. So that, sure. let's, set, let's set the frame of the book because that's what intrigued me and had me turning pages. And without giving anything away, I'm uh, sharing from the, the jacket cover there uh -huh. that after the first practice session, the way you frame this, 
at the Indy 500, Kate Riley is stunned to discover that she's the fastest driver on the speed charts. But she's also surprised to learn that she was not the first woman to do this here in the in the 2010s, that actually there had been a, a fictional driver, PJ Rodriguez, that had accomplished the same fact in 1987. So, mm -hmm. so tell me more about the two women, the fictional Kate Riley, the fictional uh, PJ Rodriguez and the struggle that they both faced because I think I I put down here in the note that there was an atmosphere of prejudice and chauvinism that that uh, uh, came out from this. So so talk about the two and what they faced. Sure. Well, you know, PJ was a pioneer. Um, you know, swimming against the tide for sure, much like Janet Guthrie and, and uh, Lynn St. James. And I, I sort of deliberately positioned her in between the two, you know, close to the time that, that Lynn St. James would have, would have uh, arrived. Um, and, you know, she was operating in a much less enlightened time. Um, Kate is certainly driving in a more enlightened time. There are more female drivers around, um, but she's still fighting a headwind, let's say, um, you know, as are and all of the women trying to make careers as drivers these days. Um, they both faced a lot of the same struggles and primary among them is money. Um, I think all drivers struggled with that, but you know, by and large, you've got to bring money to a team. Uh, and so I think a lot of what happens is um, brands don't see women as their ambassadors. Uh, they're not as willing to get behind women. I mean, I don't, I don't know that I'm saying anything controversial. I'm sort of checking myself. Am I, you know, am I saying being controversial? But they, they obviously don't because they're not funding women in the same, uh, you know, ratios or, or numbers as they're funding men. Obviously, there aren't as many women, but if there were more being funded, we'd see more you know, et cetera. Well, I'll, um, I'll, I'll interject there for a second because it yeah. is something that, that is back and forth. And we'll talk about the level of detail that you go into in the books. But um, I follow the road to Indy and the road yeah. to Indy would be the drivers that are going to fill the seats. Uh, I'll follow it all the way down to the Lucas Oil Racing School scholarship where they're trying to get into the Lucas Oil Formula Series one female participating in the scholarship, one female participating in the racing. We had one female last year in the Road to Indy series, and she's gone to the W series. And we could have a whole follow-up uh, conversation, I'm sure, about the yeah. W series. Right. Uh, so the Road to Indy is not paved with female opportunities at this time. I, I got a Twitter comment back to say it's early in the season and maybe there'll be announcements, but unless there's four or five or six announcements, we're, we're really still are facing some of the same issues in, in 1987. Uh, right. Right. And, and I don't know. I mean, again, I think it is a, it's a time when we're more aware of it. But awareness is not yet making change. Hmm. Um, so, you know, I guess it's a step. I mean, yeah, and I don't know how to fix it. Um, I mean, the whole money thing, the whole money thing and the sponsorship thing really frustrates me. I, I went and actually looked up because one of the things that just astonished me at the time, this is 2017, and it might have happened more recently too, but there's actually, there was a car sponsored by the Women in Technology Championship, right? Which is an LGPA, right? LP, LPGA, LPGA okay. event held at the uh, golf course at in an Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Right. Women in Technology Championship, female golfers, and they sponsor a car in the Indy 500, and their driver, Zach Beach. Tie in, tie in with GameBridge and it's, it's their corporate sponsorship and it was a way for them to reach point. out that goes into it. And, and but a man, the Women in Technology Championship, sponsoring a man. Well, they, they're used, uh, uh, see now yeah. I sound like I'm a little bit defending. No, 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 I do, I appreciate you, you your have, perspective. You have, but you have Dan Weldon for years driving the National Guard car Mm -hmm. or uh, Brazilians driving right. the National Guard car when right. it really, you know, was was uh, in that situation. So uh, yeah. the logic behind it doesn't always make sense. And, and I think, right. you know, I, so it's not just this topic that I was struck by. I was struck by if, if you are a, a, a race fan or you want to know more about racing, 
pick up the book, turn to <laughs> turn to chapter 19 okay. and pull up a video of a four lap qualifying run. Yeah. Because when, when you're describing that, uh, it, it takes you and puts you in the cockpit as it goes through that. And so I, I commend you on that. And that's the Thank level you. of detail that I think comes from your, your technical writing background, that, that back, back up. But I, I detected that there was an understory that was going on. There was a story behind the story of how things were in 1987, how things were. I, 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 I had to stop one time and say to my wife, is this still going on that drivers are getting cat calls as they're walking through from, from one side of the pits to the other in the 2000s or the 2010s or coming up on 2020? And what did she it, say? Uh, well, I take it it is if you're alluding to it or you're putting it there that that actually is the, that it goes into um, play. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know about cat calls. I know, um, I know of one, female in a high position i i haven't ever gotten her you know consent to really talk about this so i'm not going to be more specific who after being groped at an event one year swore she wouldn't go back to that event the next year uh you know in recent years this is not mm -hmm. decades ago either um mm -hmm. i know that pippa every year gets the question What's it like being the only female in the field? <laughs> What's it like being a woman driving the car? And she's like, car don't care, you know? <laughs> well, and this um, isn't just the conversation that we're having here. You, you talk yeah. about that first day of practice then of, yeah. of Kate going into the media center and being asked the question of, of how did the car feel? How was the experience? Was it a lap on your own or was it a lap in tow? She got asked all of the questions that were right. the, the typical racing questions. And then she get asked, and this is where it struck me right away. Do you think more people will take you seriously? Seriously. And this is where I found myself being a, a point counterpoint type of mm -hmm. individual because I cannot imagine that question being asked of a top driver. But then again, I can imagine it being asked of a, a, a rookie that is mm -hmm. going into it. If, if Oliver asks you this upcoming year or, or a Pato Award, one of the rookies mm -hmm. or, or the uh, uh, new driver that was just announced for Dale Coyne, if they go out and they run a fast lap, they're going to get asked, well, will people take you more seriously? But this was really the undertone of it being a, as you brought up, how does it feel to be the only female driver? And, you know, you're doing something amazing because you're a female. Right. Well, and I think, uh, first of all, in the book, this is Kate's second year at Indy. So she wouldn't have been a rookie. That's a minor detail. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I, I, I do, I do, I do see your point. I think my feeling is, and you know, this is, this is borne out, not necessarily in that specific situation, but in similar kinds of situations is that, um, unless I think that, that basically being a woman in that situation is, would make people ask the question, no matter how many years experience. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, unless she's driving for Penske, right. In which case people are going to take you seriously. But if she's, if, if, if it's a female that's not driving for maybe Penske or Andretti or Ganassi, um, no matter how many years, then a woman, I feel, you know, and it, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, I'm overreacting. The point you is, is it was still asked of Danica, even though she was with the top teams of the Tony Stewart or with the, right. with the Michael right. Andretti and, and maybe there's the fear of retribution of Tony or Michael coming in and saying something to you. Right. It still went on. We, we, we still are facing this and it, it's a, it, we have many different examples where it is what it is. Now, how do we bring attention to it, bring light to it? And, and uh, um, this might be, what, what did my wife say? My wife said that this interview could potentially be part in a series where we explore this. I would like to hear the point counterpoint on the uh, W series because the W series, frankly, doesn't make sense to me from a, a, a separate but equal. 
I'm yet not, not going to be your counterpoint there because I'm in agreement. <laughs> yet if they're attracting the sponsorship and they have the, the sponsors yeah. that come on to it, then they are solving the problem that we're talking about of the money issues and the money coming into it to an extent. So that, sort that, of. Yeah. that's, that's an aspect that goes into it. You know, I was, I was researching for this cause you make the comparisons very well. And, 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 uh, uh, the, the, the mystery had me on, I'll, I'll, I'll segue to say the mystery had me on the edge. I didn't know who it okay. was until it comes all the way through. And, and there was a couple different paths that it went down the theme that was in there. And I think I'm, I'm taking maybe a little bit of the soapbox and going in there as comparing that. Um, I, I looked up 1987. I looked up Indy in 1987. Mm -hmm. I, I came across an LA times article that was, uh, yeah. entitled why aren't women racing at Indy and this is uh, you know 10 years after uh, 10 uh, uh, 11 years after Janet Guthrie and she was the one that was highlighted in this and if you've ever seen uh, for folks if they haven't seen the 30 for 30 um, highlighting uh, Janet Guthrie you need to do that because you'll get a, a, a light of what we're talking about as well uh, and but I asked myself, is this still going on? Why is it still so difficult for female drivers or, or women drivers? Yeah, it's a it's a question. I mean, I think you know a lot of it. And and Janet in that article which you sent me ahead of time, I was glad to see it. Um, talks about it being money, right? It's people weren't going to invest in her because they didn't think she could do it. Um, and as much as she got out there and proved and, you know, lots of other people. I mean, she points out, you know, AJ Foyt gave her a chance in, mm -hmm. to, to drive his car, his backup car around, but then unfortunately couldn't give her the car for the race. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as much as she proved she could, she could handle it and she could compete. I mean, she finished ninth, right? The, the year she had a decent car and was able to finish. Um, the, they still weren't willing to fund, um, you know, and, and we know we've discussed or you mentioned in a, in a previous interaction, you know, Pippa scrounges all year to get the money. She works her tail off all year to get the money to run a single race. Um, and thank God she does. So we still have a woman in the field. Um, but it's, it's astonishing how much effort it takes to find people willing. And I, you know, I, I think a lot of it, um, and, and yes, this all goes back to, this is what I was trying to illuminate in this okay. book to an yep. extent is yeah. um, the, the, like, I think I used the, the phrase before the headwinds that females are fighting, you know, it's not, it's not just, you know, cat calls or like, why are you here kinds of questions. Um, it's the struggle to be seen as an appropriate brand ambassador for a sponsor who might bring money. And that was my point about Zach Beach. I, you know, Zach Beach is great. I think he's mm -hmm. fantastic, but the the optics to people who don't know the interconnections behind the scenes is women in technology and it's a man yeah. um yeah. and you know so so why are we not getting women out there to promote things um and i you know there <laughs> there are a whole lot of reasons um i i think a lot of them is i saw something recently and i do not want to talk politics this person was talking politics and the, the comment was the likability trap that women have to not only be seen as competent, but also likable. And, you know, we see plenty of male drivers who, um, you know, we probably say, man, that guy's a complete, you know, mm -hmm. a-hole. He's a complete jerk, but man, can he drive? Yeah. Whereas I don't think we're ever going to say, well, that, you know, that woman's a raving so-and-so, but man, she can drive. So let's give her all this money. No, I mean, and we have the same thing in, you know, 20 years in real estate, we have the same thing with it that goes on in that. And then in yeah. management with it, and then the, mm -hmm. the technology field of being in that, oh, where, yeah. uh, you know, there were, there were women that could code so much better than, than the, the guys that were in that. So it, it, it's something that I, it's I, I was, I was struck yeah. by, I wanted to have a conversation about it. Um, I want to continue to have the conversation about it because I'm, I'm really looking at what is that path? What is that road to, to yeah. be one of them that, that has the dreams? I, I've got a selfish reason for it uh, because uh, my first uh, uh, 500 that I attended uh, was with Lynn St. James and oh, okay. um, 
uh, uh, Sarah Fisher that were mm -hmm. in it, and there has been a female driver in 20 straight Indy 500. So if we if we take a step back and look at it, IndyCar is doing a lot better than a lot of other sports and a it's lot true. of other uh, aspects of it by having that level of recognition and, and being in there. Um, I worry or I think about or I, I go through, will it continue between now and May? I'll be thinking about how does that get put together and, and yeah. will the program be um, enough financial funding or, or, or not just a, a dog and pony show, but actually be something where it can put a driver into yeah. the field and be competitive as, you know, Pippa finishing 16th last year, she, she showed yeah. herself and, and was a, was a yellow flag away from being up in the top 10. I mean, that, I know. How, I was, how it falls into it. I was, I was in it. the pits going, come on, give us a yellow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it goes through it. But, uh, uh, you, you, you did it. You did a great job with the book, uh, kiss the bricks. Uh, I now have to work my way backwards to find what what the uh, the road to Indy was for uh, for fictional Kate Riley, yeah. um, but uh, a great job of the 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 technical aspect of of putting you into what I hear described back from the seat. I, I'm not one that gets it behind the seat. Have haven't uh, uh, done that, nor do I, I uh, aspire to that path. Uh, I'm I'm one that has watched far too much racing. I had a full head of hair when I started doing it. Um, and then the, the technical aspect of it uh, from a murder mystery in and of itself um, mm -hmm. with, with her sister Holly helping out and old dad and, and um, her, her boyfriend coming into it. Uh, very fascinating just from that standpoint, if you want to Thank put you. aside the, the racing aspects. But I also sense there was a story behind the story, and I thank you for for uh, talking about that with me because it, it's something that I want to have as a continuing subject as we go forward. The, those cool. opportunities from karting to um, uh, the the uh, uh, cars, um, and then through the Formula Series and up to the the Road to Indy, um, is something that I would love to see someone step up and and be supportive in a. A, a, a drive for diversity type of program or, or something yeah. along that line. Yeah. I want to make two points. One is that Please. Kate, you know, I, I, she's fictional. I can take all kinds of liberties. So her path to Indy is not the normal one, right? She didn't go through, you know, Indy lights or any of that kind of thing. I mean, she came through sports cars. So yeah. um, the other is I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, you know, with your praise of, of uh, the scenes inside the cockpit, um, there is certainly a lot of that is owed to my experience technical writing, but it was mostly Pippa. Yeah. So I got to know Pippa well, and when I came to writing this book, I said, Pippa, you got to help me. And so I did the best. I, I asked her a bunch of questions, and she would send me back pages of answers of my question, mm -hmm. what's this like? How are you adjusting this? And I would write the scene, and then I would send her the scene. And let me tell you, that's terrifying because <laughs> she's the expert and what do I know? Mm -hmm. um, and then she would correct it and tell me, no, you would, you would adjust, you know, you would adjust this here and this here. And, you know, two seconds later, you're adjusting the other thing or adjusting it back. So she was, uh, this, this book would not be anything, anything without her input. And I can never thank her enough for that. She made it amazing. She was an instructor at the Lucas uh, mm -hmm. shootout at yeah. Sebring. Uh, she did not actually vote because right. one of the drivers that she Emily, was uh, right. coaching directly was participating in it. Um, the format was that the drivers would go out. There were three groups of nine drivers. Mm. Um, I could not tell who was who in the car other than the color of the car or if a mom and dad said, hey, Johnny's <laughs> in that particular car. Uh -huh. So I did not know that. Um, Pippa would give, and the other instructors that were placed at different turns would right. give detailed review of each driver that came by. So the banana colored car, the red car, the purple mm -hmm. car, and she was able to go through that to the drivers as to what numbers they were. Uh, so she's very giving of her knowledge yeah. from that standpoint. Um, from the driver feedback aspect, and I'm going to have the uh, winner on the show as well, um, uh, Eli Navarro, um, I couldn't see the track, but yet I had my list of top seven and that uh -huh. was based upon who was listening to the Pippas of the world uh -huh. or the, the RC Innocence. What were they doing their feedback? How did they carry themselves? 
How did they do those things? Um, Emily em was one of the top five that, that went into it. And uh, uh, I had four of the top five in my list of seven cool. by, by how they were carrying themselves, how are they doing that? And they, they were the ones who were making notes when Pippa was giving out the information and others uh, cool. uh, among other items that they did. So she's, she's great for the sport. And uh, yeah. um, I'm, I'm, I'm as much of a fan or I come at this from a fan standpoint. So I'll definitely be rooting her on and, to get to yeah. that and, and go through. Well, we'll have to stay tuned to find out what uh, uh, Kate has in store for her next part. Is that, is that a plan to uh, work on another one or? It is, it is. I know I left a giant cliffhanger in, in kiss the bricks. I, I realized that I apologize the family story, right? The Kate, there's a lot of backstory about Kate's family and I mm -hmm. left this big cliffhanger, a sealed envelope. <laughs> I've had fans come up and go, what are you doing? I've taken a break from writing for a couple of years and I'm just okay. getting back to things. I had a bunch okay. of fam family changes and all kinds of things going on, moved a couple of times. So uh, I, I am getting back to it. I am starting to think about what's, what's the next chapter going to be for her. Um, so there, there will be another one. It won't be right away, um, but, but there, will be, there will be something forthcoming. I will, I will stay tuned. I've got you followed. Okay. Um, in the notes to this, um, I'm going to have a link to your um, information on Amazon uh, right. so that uh, people can um, get that on, on Kindle or, or order the hard copy of it. I appreciate you taking the time to uh, be on 33 Dreams of Indy. Um, Thank you. I love interviewing the drivers, especially the, the young ones. Mm -hmm. um, I ask them a question, what will it be like to start the uh, Indy 500? And, mm -hmm. and that tape will be played when they actually end up winning it uh, nice. at some point. So I, nice. I know that, that that's going to occur. Uh, but as I, I envision this, uh, my little baby here, uh, this type of dialogue is something that I want to have as well. I don't want to just talk about who's going to be in this seat, who's going to be in that seat. There's, there's enough of that. And there's enough great journalists that, that cover the sport. Um, but I want to tell the stories behind it. And you're an inspiration from that standpoint. So thanks for taking the time. Well, thank you. I really appreciate uh, also having a, a deeper conversation about racing and, and the stories. I like that too. Fantastic. So if you like this episode, um, give a comment. Uh, we're on every major player, 33 Dreams of Indy. Um, so Apple, uh, Google, the iHeartRadio podcast, uh, uh, Spotify. Uh, so all the major players that are on that. Um, it's also on video. So subscribe to our YouTube channel. You guys are tech enough. You know what to do. And, and uh, with the racing season coming up, um, you're going to have a lot of plane flights. Uh, so uh, make sure you just add that into your subscriptions and you'll be able to do it. And uh, uh, Tam, I look forward to meeting you in person. I and uh, yeah. uh, keep uh, keep Kate uh, between the the two walls and and yeah. going and and yes, I want to know what's in that envelope. Yes, so, uh, yes, uh, I I'll promise. Let you, I'll let you get back to work on that. <laughs> Great, thank you so much for having me here. Great you conversation. Bet. So until next time, keep dreaming. Hope you enjoyed this video from Thirty Three Dreams of Indy. It would mean the world to me if you would click subscribe so that you can be notified of any new videos that come along.